Hello, Kara. How are you? Good to see you. Um, welcome you to my personal beach, the private beach over here. I uh, love your private beach. Yeah, I know that you like the beach. You can see it on the back. <laughs> so I'll just lower my head briefly so you can read my sign. The beach is my happy place. <laughs> and, we, and we didn't even coordinate it, right? I know, just so, coincidence. <laughs> exactly. So, Kara, a, a six-figure seller, I would like to welcome you and having this chat with you. And thank you very much for having the time with me. And we're happy to, to learn from you uh, about tactics and things to grow your business. And please tell me about yourself. Please tell the audience about yourself. Uh, so, uh, my name's Cara. Um, I live in a place called Walton on Thames in um, England, which is just about 30 minutes from London. Um, and I've got one daughter. And my daughter is the reason I started my business uh, because um, I needed a product that would help her sleep and protect her from the sun and the elements like cold and chill, etc. when we were out and about when she was a baby. Um, and I became so frustrated with this problem. And I still don't know why I did like get so frustrated with this problem because you wouldn't think it would be that big a problem. Um, but I, um, I actually invented um, a product that solved that problem for my daughter. And that's the reason I'm in business and talking to you now. Okay, yeah. so I think it will be a very interesting story for, for all of us to learn how do you actually start from inventing a product and take it out to Amazon? Well, I didn't, you see, I didn't actually really start on Amazon. So Amazon, I, I sort of, I, my products have been selling on Amazon since 2010, since I launched. Um, but what happened was, was that, I, as I said, I became really frustrated with this issue that I wanted to um, help my daughter sleep. So what I wanted was basically, you know, like the blackout blinds in the nursery, which cover the windows. Um, I wanted one for the pram or stroller. And that was, that's the, the mental picture of the product that I had in my head. Um, so uh, it became clear as well that other friends had the same problem. So uh, the, one of the days I remember that sort of the moment where it kind of, when I went, yes, I think I need to do something about this, um, was when I was um, out at lunch with about five or six friends who had babies around the same age. I think they were about six, seven months and we'd fed them all. And then everyone started putting blanket, pashmina, cardigan, whatever muslin over the pram in order to get the baby to go to sleep. And it's a bit like, you know, putting the, um, the cover over the bird cage, you know, you, you want to take away the distractions. Um, and I just thought this is ridiculous. Surely there must be something out there. So, um, this is, remember, this is going back like 2008. So, um, you know, quite sort of not early days in terms of the internet, because obviously the internet been around properly since about 99, um, in terms of sort of accessibility. Um, but you know, it was not, so I, I, I was always known as a really good Googler. So I've always been one of these people where if you tell me that you want an orange spotted llama's jumper from out of Mongolia or Scotland, I will find that product if it exists. Okay. So I've always been really good at hunting things down and I couldn't find a product that did what I wanted it to do. So I just thought, well, you know, oh, there seems to be some, a bit of a gap in the market. And I have to be honest with you. I did not start this and actually I'm, I was actually I'm, I was actually a seven figure seller last year pre-COVID ah. um, but I never thought I'd be doing seven figures uh, based on the idea of something that would help my daughter sleep um, but I just decided to progress it so I went and um, uh, I went to a local fabric shop I bought what I now know to be completely the wrong fabric I made up a completely rubbish design that you know it doesn't look anything like it does now um, but I came up with the initial concept and then I started asking friends and uh, family and people I knew who had babies whether or not they thought it was a good idea. And they all sort of pretty much, although a lot of friends, the, the problem with asking friends and family is they'll, they'll either do two, they'll do one of two things. They'll either tell you, oh yeah, no, it's amazing. Like it doesn't matter how rubbish it is. Or they're kind of like, eh, well, you know, you know, because they sort of want to protect you and they don't want you to, you know, like have a failure. Mm -hmm. So they're not always the best people to ask, but you've got to ask somebody. So this is why we do A-B testing. Many times uh, we talk about doing A-B testing and uh, asking people which are not your uh, family members and friends. Yes, I mean, that's the techni technical terminology. And these days we didn't have A-B testing. Um, <laughs> so what I actually did uh, was there were a few mum websites online uh, and I did actually post way back. And I found the old post one day from like 2008 where I sort of said, this is my idea of a product, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? And all these people were like, yeah, that's brilliant. Um, and I'd love to try one and, you know, I'll be a tester and all this sort of stuff. So I sort of A-B tested, but not officially, if you know what I mean. 
Um, <clears throat> I think you'll find with my story that I probably, I do do a lot of the things you're supposed to do. I just don't put it in the box of what it, it, the terminology is. It's more of an instinctive thing more than anything else. Yeah, but, but you, you okay, this was one of the products, you had other products before that, right? No, 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 no. So I've never invented anything, never had any form of experience in retail, never manufactured anything. I had absolutely no experience whatsoever in what I was doing. So I was completely out of my depth, had no idea. There were no Amazon courses. There were no, you know, there was no one to ask what you did. So um, <clears throat> what I did do is um, my background is that uh, I actually used to work in public relations, marketing, that sort of thing, which has been very helpful. Um, and I actually worked with a team that launched Amazon in the UK, eBay in the UK, grocery shopping in the UK, that sort of thing. So uh, that was good experience. But I also worked for a magazine company. And one of the magazines was a baby magazine. And back when I used to work for them in the mid 90s, um, they used to have uh, freebies on the front of the magazine all the time. And they're called cover mounts. And um, we used to joke that one day they would actually put a baby, a live baby on the front of the magazine because they had so many products they were giving away. Um, <clears throat> but the one thing I did know was that the products, because I used to have to help source them from manufacturers, would be like, hi, can I have like 20,000 baby spoons? Can I have 20,000 plates or play mats or whatever it might be? And also we manufactured the, the business, um, had a manufacturer who produced these products for us. But the one thing I knew was that they were very safe because I knew they had to go through a variety of safety tests. And obviously you can't have a magazine, a baby magazine, giving away a gift that then breaks in half and chokes your baby to death because that wouldn't probably be very good publicity. So, um, and I've always been obsessed with safety. So safety is one of the things I am literally like, like when I say I'm obsessed with it, I think that's probably an understatement. <laughs> so, so tell me, how did you take this idea? You have a beautiful idea over there. And, and how do you make it to a brand, okay? There's a big, long journey between setting up some of the idea and you know, many private labels start with some ideas, but taking an idea and move it to a global brand takes a lot of knowledge and, and, and uh, right instincts, as you mentioned. Yeah. So what, what, what is your secret sauce? Okay, well, let's do this. That's that. What well, is so your secret sauce? So the story, the story is that I went to a trade show, which is where a lot of baby products show their stuff, like big brands and small brands, uh, because I wanted to find out from uh, you know, potential retail customers, because in, in these days, remember this is 2009, um, it was more normal if you had a product to go and sell it in retailers. So sell it to the big, re big box retailers, et cetera, and sell to smaller retailers, of which there were a lot more in those days. Um, and so I thought I either go on TV and I do like Dragon's Den or Shark Tank or whatever, and I could be potentially humiliated in front of millions of people, um, or I could go to this trade show and actually pick up some useful tips. Now that's something that I would even advise anyone who's doing a white label product to do, because actually we don't know everything. And um, one of the things I did is when I went to the show, my product was in one format. By the time I came back from the show, I had more ideas of making the product better which of which one of them is still a very distinctive quality of the product. Um, and so, you know, the thing is, I think sometimes when you sell on Amazon, just sell on Amazon, you kind of lose a bit of perspective on the fact that, you know, uh, of, of like what I'd call old fashioned methods of testing products and making your product different, because this is one of the things that brands do is that, what they also so the difference between a brand and a product um a brand is something that a customer has an emotional attachment to in some way and a product is a thing that has features and benefits and that's literally it now what i see a lot of amazon sellers doing is that they consider themselves to have a brand because they have the name of their business it's not the same thing right i have the name of a business right my business name is really simple ideas limited that's my limited company that's the parent company etc but my brand is snooze shade now the reason why, why why people care about snooze shade and like snooze shade and will recommend snooze shade to their friends is because what i've done is i've given it a certain amount of personality traits and so therefore people engage with it so for example you've got to have things that make it stand out from competitors so that might be the fact which it is in my case, super high quality, right? I mean, my products have something like a 0.01% fault rate, which on, an, on a sewn elasticated fabric product 
is pretty bloody impressive, frankly. Um, and that comes from valuing quality right from the word go. I've never wanted to do a cheap product. I mean, my products aren't massively expensive, but I never wanted to be cheap. And I still have, I have people who've been using it for like, you know, I had a lady the other day, she had bought a snoo shade eight years ago and she's now using it. She's had a second child and she's now using it with her second child. I've had people using snoo shades, you know, they've used it through three or four children. Now, in some ways that's a bad sales technique because it means unfortunately they're not buying more products. <laughs> so, so, but, so you consist of quality. You said that quality is quality. number one differentiator. Right, also yeah. safety is massive. So particularly in my product area, because I'm in baby products, now the one thing that parents obsess about is safety. Now, people often say their product is safe. They don't really know what that means. Now, I know every single like European, American safety certif certification, I've had everything tested. If I make a claim about, a about one of my products, so when I say it's air permeable, which means air passes through it, I've actually had that tested for air permeability. I'm not just saying it. Um, I also design my products, which it makes it more expensive for me to be safe enough for a newborn. Now, most baby products aren't that safe. They're usually safe enough for a three-year-old because the concept is you can hit a certain level of safety because the parent's really going to be using it. But actually, I prefer for all my products to be safe enough for a newborn to literally, I mean, and I've seen people do it. They're chewing on my, on my poppers and the poppers are the only baby safe certified poppers in the world and they cost a bloody fortune but well not a bloody fortune but they're, they're expensive when you think i have a set i have maybe 16 20 25 poppers on a product but the thing is you see also is that you know the other thing i bring out with my brand is that this is designed by a mum right so this is something amazon sellers could do a lot more of is if you've actually if you genuinely love what you're selling and you genuinely like what you're selling you should have some form of passion for it. You know, you should have some form of personal investment in it. So I see quite a lot of people who, you know, they're like, oh, I really love, I really love kitchen stuff. Well, great, you know, talk about why you love kitchen stuff. You've spent years looking for this, 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 and you couldn't find it, so you made your own. You know, that, that's, that's how Dyson started, like Robert Dyson with his Hoovers. He didn't, well, sorry, not his Hoovers, because he had, they had Hoovers, and he wanted something different. Um, so and the other thing also that I think a good way of, of showing how uh, the brand is different from the product is an example I use, which is that, um, you know, people have different favored cars, right? So, but they tend to be brands of cars. It doesn't tend to be like, I like a Mercedes SLK. It'll be, I like Mercedes, but I hate BMW. I love Ford, but I hate Jaguar, whatever it might be. And those are emotional decisions on brands that will have been picked up almost by osmosis through a whole range of activities. Now, some of that will be your dad hates BMWs, your mum hates Jaguars, your, your brother loves Mercedes, whatever it might be. But it also could be that particular company didn't do something great in, in public, and so they've done something negative, which has made you think badly of them. And then other companies do things that are good, and therefore you think, oh, they seem like they've actually got a kind of a heart. And so we make an emotional attachment with these brands. Remember, not the name of a company, but these brands. So actually then what happens is when you're looking for a car, you don't go, I want an SLK. You just go, I'm going to go and look at a Mercedes, right? And then you go and look through their range of cars and those are their products. So their products keep changing all the time, but you have that like established um, relationship with the brand. And that's something I think a lot of Amazon sellers, you know, could really work on actually. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's very difficult when you have so many different brands out on Amazon and so what? There were millions of brands out there when yeah. I launched. M many sellers are actually uh, having only one product or two products or three products in, in their, their product. But I started with one product. I started with one product and I didn't get, I didn't get two or three products for another two. How do you create this emotion between your product to the person and probably the, what you expect from the people that's buying from your product is really talking about it so other people will buy it. Right. But also it's not necessarily, it's so, it's not, it's not just as simple as you say this, they buy it. Although there is an element of that, as I said. So for example, if you're selling, um, if you're selling a cat mug, right? I'm a huge cat fan. I've got cats, <laughs> right? And I'll buy anything with a cat on it, frankly. Um, and everyone buys me gifts with cats on. Okay. I'm really easy to buy for anything with a cat and I'm happy. Right. So the thing is, so is that if you sell a product that's of cats and it's a nice product, 
there's so many different and 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 remember we, yes we're talking about amazon but actually there is a there's a world outside of amazon as well which we sometimes forget now amazon was in existence when i launched in 2010 because i launched it in 1999 and it had been going for 10 years and my product the one product without any form of me doing anything actually in terms of other than all the pr marketing etc i didn't do anything on amazon uh, other than it got listed uh, by vendor central initially so and it went to the number one spot okay straight away in its category because it was different you see so first of all like make sure people know why your product is different now maybe that's because your your cat mug doesn't crack like as soon as you put it in the dishwasher maybe it's because the, the transfers don't come off maybe it's you know you're proud of the quality of of your product um but the other thing i i see and i see this all the time because i shop a lot on amazon okay right my if my house doesn't have amazon deliveries coming in every day then there's something wrong with the world okay so i am i am a big amazon customer and i think that one of the things i see a lot is a lot of the courses that we that, that i see out there um teach you about like writing these long like email follow-ups to ask reviews and all the rest of it okay now that's one part of it now i personally I don't really care that you're a small family owned business, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. When actually, other than that, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. Um, so, but what I do care about is, I mean, what I've actually started doing is I've actually started rather than doing these really, really long messages, I literally send a message that says, hi there, is everything okay with your order? Right? That's simple. Yeah, simple. Forget all the bollocks, forget all the, forget all the blah, blah, blah. I don't even ask them for a review. Okay. Right. I don't ask them for their feedback. I literally just say hi there and I write it like I speak. So, you know, I, I, hi, uh, I'm Cara. I'm, you know, uh, and I'm just checking in to make sure that your order arrived safe and sound. Hope everything's okay. If not, just reply to this message and I'll help you. Right. That's it. No, blah, blah, blah. Now, since I've been doing these shorter messages, I've had a lot more responses because people actually think that you're writing to them. Like it doesn't seem like a long verbose sales pitch to get a review. And I get, and I also do that with returns. Now this is the other thing you see, is that what people, what part of actually caring and, and showing emotion and getting people to react with you, one of your biggest opportunities is when people send your product back. Because you can learn what went wrong, right? And if you can learn what went wrong, you can either do something about it with the product or you can just say, I'm really sorry right and then that makes actually the customer feel like you give a shit because actually otherwise so i send out literally i send out a message and i say hi there i don't get many returns so if you don't mind it'd be really helpful for me to know you know why you've returned your product and sometimes they haven't sometimes it's like a general adjustment on amazon sometimes they've ordered two sometimes they've ordered one both products so they they've ordered one for not six months and one for six months and they wanted to see which one they preferred Sometimes they just didn't like it. Sometimes their baby didn't like it. You know, all of that sort of stuff. But I reply to every single one of those, right? Every single reply that comes in, I reply to, or we, we reply. I mean, I have got, <clears throat> I've got a VA and I've got um, another, another my, what I call my right hand as well. She, she is on my team. So we, all, we reply, right? Um, the other thing I also do is I reply to every single review that's ever written about my product. And I don't just do it in a, hi, thank you very much indeed. Meh, 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 meh. I'm like, if, the, if there's a problem, okay, then I say, I'm really sorry that this has happened or, you know, like if they've had a fault, you know, and I put in the, I have a really, really low fault rate of 0.01%. So I'm really sorry that you've had bad luck. However, you know, if you contact me and here's my email address and you can put your email address in the reviews, okay. please contact me and I will sort it out. Now, what often happens is I don't get a reply from the person who had the fault, but you have to remember, right? I'm an Amazon shopper. Okay, forget that I'm selling on Amazon. When I go to look at products, I look at the reviews. It's the first thing I look at. And if I see that the company is replying and actually seems to give a toss, I am way more likely to reply to, to put my money with that seller than I am with someone who is obviously getting maybe a few faults and doesn't reply to him. So, because, so you, you, you reply publicly or, or on the yeah, page? Publicly. Yeah. yeah, every single review. Not privately. No. Not, not on the back end. Where you can't, you but, can't reply. Yeah, you can't reply privately onto a review because you don't know where it's come from. Sometimes I can work it out. Like when we used to have full access to names and all that sort of stuff. 
Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have actually stalked some customers. I see this is the other thing, right? When someone leaves a really bad review, I have actually literally found like, because they've got a slightly unusual name and then I've looked for the ASIN and then I've looked for, like they've said, I bought it a couple of months ago. I've literally stalked the customer, right? Found them and messaged them and said, I am really genuinely sorry that you've had a bad experience. Can I send you another product? Because it's been a fault or whatever. And they're blown away. Absolutely blown away. Because the one thing about Amazon is it's a very impersonal place. So people aren't used to anyone being human. They're just used to like automated messages that just say the same old, same old and blah, blah, blah. So if you can bring out some kind of connection, like whether it's writing, responding to your reviews, which you can do, you just go on and you comment on the review and you say, thank you ever so much for your really lovely review. I'm really glad you've been enjoying this product. That's fine. And then when it's a bad review, don't bloody ignore them, right? Everyone hates it. If I put a bad review up, I don't want to be ignored. I want to be validated, right? So then I go on and I go, I'm absolutely, I'm so like, sometimes it's because the baby doesn't like it, right? Because they're baby products. I'm like, I'm really, really sorry. I have thousands of happy customers, but not every, but all babies are different and not every baby is going to like this product. I'm really sorry it didn't work out for you. That's it. It doesn't cost me five seconds of my time, but it makes, you know, when someone else is reading it, they can go, oh, well, it doesn't work for all babies, but it might work for mine. So they're more likely to take a chance on buying it. Um, so, so even and really the differentiation for building your brand would be really care about your customer. 100%. If you don't care about your customers, your customers won't care about you. Simple as that. If, 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 every single one of them. The one every that single one. The one that gives give you bad feedback. I don't give a bit whether they're nice to me, nasty to me, whatever, right? I really don't care. They are my customer. And I, if I, without them, right, this is the other thing. I think people get very, and I hear this in chats and talks online. Oh, I had a difficult customer. Oh. It's like, so what, right? Without any customers, you ain't got no business, right? And the bad customers, it's the same thing for anything in life. They say that if you have one customer who loves your product, you'll get 10 positive messages sent out about your brand. If a customer has a bad experience with your brand, they'll send out 100 messages. You know, people will rant on social media about the way you've treated them, you know, because they're pissed off because you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And actually for the cost of, a brand new, I, I, I say to people, don't bother sending me the product back. I don't want it back. Just send me a photo of the fault. If it's got a fault, send me a photo, throw that one away or give it to a friend. If it's not that big a fault, whatever, I really don't care. Right. And I'll send you a brand new one. No questions, no arguing because you kill them with kindness. And if you kill your customers with kindness, they're going to go, Oh my God, I bought like when somebody then goes, Oh, I bought this cat mug. They're going to go, yeah, do you know what? I bought this from this, this cust I, I bought this on Amazon the other day and the seller was lovely and they really sorted me out when I had a problem, blah, blah, blah. And then they go, hang on a minute, let me just go and get my Amazon app and I'll share my link with you and you can go and buy one too, which is what I do when I have products that I like. I'm always sharing products. I'm like, everyone's always like, oh, where did you get that? Where did you get that? And I'm like, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. And then they're like, oh, well, which one? Because Customers, we're all lazy. We don't want to have to go through the 9 million listings on Amazon and find that one. I bought, I bought this atomizer, which was great. Um, I've, I've, I've forwarded the link to about 12 people because everyone's like, oh my God, I love it. I'm like, yeah, this is really good. And it does what it says on the tin. And here you are, boom. And I just whap it over to them on, on my mobile. So, oh. so you have to think about like how we are as people, not just how, yeah, this is one of the things I, I often say to people when I teach people how to sell on Amazon. Stop thinking like a seller, think like a buyer, right? Think how you like to be treated as a buyer and follow that path. Now, if you like to be abused, ignored, like generally treated like shit, well, off you go, do the same to your customers. But if you actually have an interaction with a company and they're really nice and they actually go above and beyond and they seem to actually care about whether or not you're happy with their product or not, well, hey, maybe try that for a change. So, so what you're saying is actually your customers become your, your brand ambassadors and 100%. they're the ones that start building up your business and buying your uh, the products as, as gifts to other people. They talk about it on the social, social media and they really like the products so they brag about it. So for example, funnily enough, a friend of mine who's actually quite, he like is involved in quite a few big Amazon uh, like companies, etc. Uh, he was at a barbecue uh, last weekend and he sent me a, a messenger, like he was going to send me a video chat and I missed it. And then I was like, what, what, what's the matter sort of thing? And he went, oh my God, 
friends of mine, they were raving and raving about this new baby product that they've got. And they said, it's fantastic, and blah, blah, blah. And it was a snoo shade. <laughs> And, um, and that's what you get, you see, because that is how, pe when people feel like your product does, even if it is like a cat mug and you're like, and everyone goes, oh, isn't that cute? You know, um, because they're like, it's slightly different. It's slightly, you know, which is where I think where the issue comes a lot, if I'm honest, is when people choose exactly the same product and it is clearly the same product because I see this a lot. When I go on Amazon, like I wanted to buy one of these, um, it was like an Ottoman storage unit thing. Like they're basically like a padded box that looks quite smart and you can chuck blankets and things in it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went on Amazon and I didn't even know what I was looking for. So I was like box, storage box. And then I came up and it was like Ottoman was the word, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, fine. So this is what I'm looking for. Then I saw listings and because obviously I'm a seller as well as a buyer, I'm looking at it in a slightly different way, admittedly. They all use the same standard pictures, all of them. How do you stand out if you're just, I mean, all you, you all you have to do is flip the product like to the left or to the right. I mean, that's one tip someone gave me once is literally if all your competitors, for example, have the photo where the product's like that angle, you do yours that angle. Because immediately it makes a, what's called a jar on the, um, on the brain. So the customer goes, oh, that looks different. It's the same, but it's different. And then they'll more likely to click on it. Um, and so there are things you can do. So the problem is when people literally take the same pictures from China and they do nothing with them to make them look different and they do nothing with them that actually helps explain the product properly. They just take China's standard pictures. You know, I'm all about, for my products are very, um, they're actually quite, fun they're very functional and people want to know what functions there are and also the benefits because also you've got the, t the difference between what the benefit is of having a product versus the feature, the function. Right. But I actually spell out a lot of that on my images because um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the what the percentage is, but I think it's something like eighty percent. No, I think it's about sixty percent of people use the Amazon app. They don't use the desktop, and right. the first right. thing that comes up when you see a listing is the images. Right. So if you're if all all you see is pictures and they all look the same, then where's your differentiation? The differentiation then becomes all about the reviews. Well, if you're all selling the same product. It's kind of difficult to differentiate from the reviews, really, in many ways. Right. I totally, totally agree with you. And, and one thing that on mobile is, is, you know, people tend to think that uh, mobile and desktop are showing the same. But mm. on mobile, you get the picture and then you get the description. And here is coming, oh. the, the, the description is the, the most important part today yeah. uh, uh, compared to, to a few years before. Okay. Because well, and also it takes four to five pages of scrolls because I've done this, I've tested it to get to the features, stroke, bullet points and product description. So you've got to, like, in order for the customer to, to have the interest to scroll all the way down and find more. So really on, an, on, the, on the app, they're really interested in two things. Well, three. They're interested in the title, they're interested in the images, and they're interested in the reviews, because those are all up in the top section, easy access. They have to go a long way. Now, the only difference with that as well is that if you have a brand registry, then you ha can use a, uh, they call it, I can never remember what they call it. It used to be called EBC, EBC. now it's A+. EBC, enhanced brand, uh, in, in brand, brand content, ECB. Yeah, A+, plus, A plus or whatever it's called. So in that, you actually get the A plus content coming straight right. up after the images, which again is a really good opportunity for you to sell like visually, verbally, etc. But if you don't have brand registry, then you've got to wait for them to scroll down like four or five scrolls before they even get to any of the information that you've taken all that time to prepare. Okay, we, we've talked about how you started the business. Let's talk about how you grow the business because, uh, you know, we, we know that... It's Amazon sellers mostly probably using PPC, okay, for global businesses. But I remember that you we were talking about it before about how you can drive traffic outside of Amazon into your Amazon sales. So yeah. tell, tell us a bit about your experience for that, in that. Well, so as I said, I don't really consider my I still don't really consider myself to be an Amazon seller, even though I'm a pretty good one. Okay. Um, but uh, basically, my growth path was Amazon because uh, what happened was that. Uh, it was 2014, so four years after I launched the business and I was getting divorced. And I looked at the business and this is the one thing also I advise Amazon sellers to do is look at the numbers, like really look at your numbers because I, I meet a lot of seven-figure sellers, right? But you know what? They're not actually making very much profit. 
So the most important thing is not your turnover, because the expression of turnover is vanity and profit is sanity is very true. I don't care if you're turning over $8 million. If you're only making like 100,000 profit, then that's pants, right? Because you're not going to really, that's not, that's not a truly profitable business. That's just a spending an awful lot of money in order to make quite a small amount of money. So um, I was selling in all the big retailers, like in the UK, like Boots, Tesco's, Mothercare, you know, John Lewis, everyone, right? And I had 22 distributors worldwide. I had distrib two distributors in the UK. I was selling on Amazon. I, I didn't sell on Amazon directly, but um, I had a lot of resellers who did. So I actually had 37 resellers on my best-selling product um, in the beginning of 2015. So in 2014, uh, I was getting divorced and I realized that I was going to have to put food on the table because I wasn't going to get a penny from my ex-husband. And I say that not in a nasty way because we're very best friends, but I just knew I wasn't going to get any money. So it was either that I had to give up Snoo Shade and go and get a job or I had to do something with Snoo Shade in order to make it into a viable business. So I decided to do the latter because I don't think I'm actually very employable. I don't think I ever really have been, if I'm honest. I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't make very good employees. Um, <laughs> So um, I decided, what actually happened was I started seeing all these Facebook ads with beautiful pictures of beaches, which is obviously going to attract my eye. Um, and apparently you could run this business and you could sit on the beach, drink cocktails with the sound of the laptop pinging away, making millions. While like, Amazon did all like, like this bit, right? 100%. It was 100% like that. And, uh, and Amazon was just going to be making all this money for you. It was fantastic. I thought, wow, I want some of that. Like, this sounds really good. I'm doing all this work and I'm not making very much money. So anyway, it wasn't quite as easy as that. So I then had to spend about a year about getting a year. rid of the computers. Uh, I then had to um, get sit and not sell for six months on Amazon uh, in order for the resellers to get rid of all their stock. And I had to stop selling to third parties, um, like as in resellers. I, I do still sell to a few online retailers and a few uh, bigger retailers, but, um, but not, as, not anything like I did in the early days. Um, and, um, and so I went on this course and uh, it was a two day course. I think it was in near Heathrow um, and it was all Amazon sellers. And they're all like talking about garlic presses and, you know, shoulder correct, posture correct, correction things and all the rest of it. And there were some people who were doing some really good money and they're doing way more money than I was. And I was like, it's ridiculous. Cause by this point I had about 13 products I developed over the last four or five years. I developed more products that fitted what parents kept saying they wanted. So again, listen to your customers because your customers can tell you what well, products they want you to sell. You don't necessarily have to do all the hard work yourself. They might say, I'd like this product, but I'd like it if it did this, or I'd love that product if it had this color. Now you don't listen to them all because some of them are a bit nutty, frankly, but actually I have, I mean, now I have, uh, I've got four products which are fundamentally the same product, but they're slightly different colors, etc., because of the fact that I listened to my customers and those are the ones that sell. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I went on this course and I, I started hearing about these things called keywords. I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. What are they? Um, and then obviously PPC got mentioned as well, uh, but I didn't actually do any PPC. I don't think, when did I start doing PPC? I think, oh yeah, I think I did it. I started PPC like in about 2016 or so. Um, so anyway, so as I said, uh, this, I think this was at late 2015. Um, and then in April 20, so what I did was as well, because my, uh, all my ASINs were a complete mess because of the fact I'd had so many different sellers. So I had, and this is a really naughty trick, you know, they thought that they were going to get more sales if they didn't, they created brand new ASINs. So I had all these ASINs everywhere. So anyway, I worked with Vendor Central, um, and they helped me tidy all my ASINs up. So they're all like neat and tidy again and all where they were supposed to be. Um, and then I sort of slowly stopped selling to Vendor Central all my products. I do still sell one product to them when they behave, which they don't always. <laughs> um, and um, so uh, basically then I start, I, I, I just went FBA straight off and that was April, 2016. Um, and um, I basically just started selling. So then I, but you see, the thing is also, as I said, is I think you, it's sort of, You've got to have that mindset, which is about what is the customer looking for. So when I talk about keywords, I was I knew about keywords, but only in a very kind of um, instinctive way, which is I know how I search on Amazon. So as I was saying, you know, like when I was looking for an, the, what ended up being called an Ottoman, when I was looking for it, it was called I was thinking storage box. But, I, you know, and then so so the thing is what when you're thinking about keywords, 
I mean, I do use, I use merchant words, which actually is quite useful for getting you some ideas, but remember they're only ideas, you know, like you can actually create your own keywords as well. Um, and then also I use Helium 10, uh, which obviously now is a lot more advanced than when I first started using it. I look at competitors like keywords that they're ranking for. And then I think, yeah, is that relevant to me? Um, the other thing I do as well is I don't always go for the big boys of the keyword world because the, the, there's so the much. Long the long tail keywords. No, no, no. I mean, as in the big, as in the like people are like 15,000 people are looking for this keyword because that's big competition and it's hard to stand out if you've got bigger sellers doing more PPC, et cetera. So what I prefer to do is, yeah, go for the, the smaller keywords and they can be short tail, they can be long tail, but fundamentally they're maybe the ones that are getting like, 300 searches, 400 searches, because actually if you add all those up, if you've got 10 of those, suddenly you've got like 5,000, but they're searches that are quite refined. So I helped this lady last year and she was struggling with her keywords. She was just a friend of a friend. And um, she got in touch with me, I think it was just before Christmas. And my friend introduced me to her and said, oh, she's got an Amazon business and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I, um, she was selling this blanket. It was a sequined blanket with a unicorn on it, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she said, oh, I'm not doing really well, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, what, you know, I looked at her title. There was like no mention of unicorn. Um, and, and she was doing all her PPC based on sequin blanket. Well, when I typed in sequin blanket, all the products that come up are just like these mermaid ones that the kids like. Yeah. Um, and, and I was like, no, like there's no point. You're never going to attract someone who's looking for a mermaid sequin blanket. You want someone who's obsessed with unicorns. So she actually put in like unicorn sequin blanket and changed her title and, and we put it in in different ways and blah, blah, blah. She had like six sales the next day. And, and it's only little, but these little changes can be really like, when they build up over time, they, they can be really like powerful. So when you're referring to keywords, you don't refer only to keywords in PPC or doing the research for PPC. You're referring to keywords in titles, in the bullets, in the descriptions, and using I, all, yeah. in the back end. Back end, of course. I forgot to mention. And, images, and, images as well, because um, I'm not sure whether it works or not, but for example, when I upload my images, I usually have keywords in my image title. Right. Because I think I think Amazon actually does rank keywords from images as well. Right, and in, of course, in the image was one of the reasons that people are think with a specific search term. Okay, they was looking for some product, and it's already built in one of the images. They would say, "This is what I was looking for. This is <coughs> the product I was looking for." And then the the way to buy these products is, is shorter. Well, so, and you see, also the other thing is what you're actually doing is you're actually thinking like a real business versus an Amazon seller. So for example, at the moment, one of the things I've been doing with COVID, I've had a bit before it got sunny here and it all suddenly meant mental. It was not sunny. And I actually, it was a lot quieter, which was great. I mean, I, I have very specific busy periods. So basically from usually from about March till sort of September, I'm completely run off my feet. And then I have like September, like uh, September to February off, which I'm not off because I'm doing other stuff. But what I was doing this time is I was working on the SEO for my website. And so I was looking at all the keywords that people are looking for on Google, because actually also those images, your Amazon listings will come up on Google. So if people are looking for those words and you've really been quite clever on like, you know, you can check there's, um, all you have to do is get a Google ads um, a, 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 a account. And then you can use their Google ads keyword planner, which is free. Um, and start seeing what kind of keywords are generated on Google. Now, I actually usually include, make sure that I have some crossover between Amazon keywords as such and Google keywords, because they're often the same, to be honest. If people are looking for one thing, they're often looking for the other. Um, but sometimes there is a slight difference maybe with the Google ones. So I chuck a few of those into my Amazon listings, because then my Amazon listings come up, plus my website, you know, and, and I think that's, you know, that all helps. It's all about, you're creating, I suppose the best way of describing it is you're creating a world for your product, right? Your product does not just exist in Amazon, right? That's just one country. It's a very big country, but it's not the only place, right? And your brand should exist in the world. And so therefore thinking about things like websites, thinking about like social media presence, thinking about, um, you know, any, anything, to any, any way that you would normally interact with the product. What, what you recommend of doing with social media? Because social media is also a big thing that drive a lot of traffic to your products. It can, okay, it can. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people do it wrong. 
and then it doesn't. And then they, and also the thing is also then they uh, tend to spend a lot too much time on it. And if I'm, if I'm really honest, I would, I'd invest my time more in the PPC to drive the awareness of the product on Amazon, because you've got, you've kind of got um, potential victims out with their wallets ready to buy your products. But I think you should have, the reason you have, now this is, and this is different, right? The reason you have social media is because it creates trust, mm -hmm. right? And that means not having, you don't, you don't have to be on social media all the time. So I see this a lot where people are like, oh, you know, I'm posting four times a day on Instagram and I'm not getting any traffic because you're probably not talking about anything of interest, right? So on Instagram, for example, the way the Instagram algorithm works, Instagram would rather that you only posted once a week, but you do it consistently, right? And actually customers also think the same way, right? They don't, you don't have to be on social media all the time, but you do have to be there reliably because then it shows that you're around because what having a social media account shows your customer is that you're still in business. Because if you've got a Facebook page, right? And you did last posted in 2018, they're gonna think you've gone out of business, right? Um, and so what you're doing also, um, so for example, this is in a different um, environment, but I've just had some tree, uh, I've had a whole, like my trees trimmed in my back garden and my nephew did it for me and he's great, but the one thing he didn't do was he didn't clear away the branches. So I've got this massive pile of branches in my back garden. So I'm thinking, right, I'm gonna get a skip, I'm gonna fill it up um, and then <clears throat> I'll get it taken away. And one of my neighbors was like, no, 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 I know somebody who does rubbish removal and it'll be a lot cheaper. So I was like, great, cause you know, and it's like a third of the price of a skip. So, um, but she gave me their details via their Facebook page. And on their Facebook page, what they do is that every time they do a job, they take a picture of the before and the after. So how messy it looked before and then how tidy it looked afterwards. And they do it every time. And it's not every day, it's, you know, I mean, I think at the moment they're so busy, like, because I mean, I had to book them in and they couldn't come in for like a week. Um, but, they, but they're taking the time because what they're thinking about is, What's the customer want to see? The customer wants to see that we're a company that understands that we're not just gonna come and take your rubbish and then just leave you, you know, we're gonna, this is what it looked like before, isn't that dreadful? Now look at this lovely after, you know? And um, so for example, if nothing else, if you get a good review on Amazon, take a screenshot of that review and put it on your Facebook page, put it on your Instagram page, right? It's cheap, it's free, and it's also social proof that shows that your products are doing a good job. Or sometimes post a bad review, right? And say, this customer didn't like it because of this and this and this. This is me and, and then what you do is you put some personality behind it and you go, this has made us think a bit about whether or not there's anything else we could do that would improve our product. And we're now thinking about ways in which we can do this, this, this. Because then it shows there's someone behind the brand that's thinking and gives a shit about what their customers say. And it's not always about the good stuff. Like we, you said in the beginning, customer care. To really yeah. listen to the customer what they want. So, so for example, like in the UK, um, we have John Lewis, you know, which is was a brand. I say was a brand that was always known for amazing customer care, right? And because they always looked after their customers, it was literally like no quibble if there's a problem or we'll sorted out. You know, amazing customer service when you walked in their stores. They'd be like, "How do I help you? How do I find what you want?" Blah blah blah. Um, so people would buy from John Lewis above other retailers who were cheaper because they got the quality and the care that they wanted from John Lewis. Now, over the last, I'd say, 10 years or so, John Lewis has definitely gone down on that parameter. And now, whereas maybe 10 years ago, like, for example, 10 years ago, um, I bought like a laptop and I bought it from John Lewis because it had a two year warranty, blah, blah, blah. I had a problem with that laptop and they then tried to make it rather than sorting it out. They then made me go to the manufacturer and do this and blah, blah, blah. And, they, and I was like, you know what? No. So next time I buy, I'm just going to either buy directly from the manufacturer or I'll buy from someone who's actually got, you know, a decent warranty. Um, and those are the things that really matter. Like, and I know we're at the, we may, you may only be talking about you've only got one product, but that's one product that you should care that your customer actually likes. And if it isn't that, then get another product. I have another question. What, what do you think about uh, promoting your product through influencers? People that are, you know, that they have communities, people that are talking with other people. How do you utilize these tactics in your... Right, so first of all, you've actually got to build yourself up or at least be seen to be 
trustworthy quality and all the other things right and you've got to show that you care about your customers etc cetera, etc cetera. because the first thing an influencer will do if you approach them is go and check out your social media and if all you've got on your social media is like tumbleweed and and you're just posting like memes of funny dog memes or something and it's got nothing to do with your product right then they're just going to be like me you know like do i really want to work with them um, so I, I work with a lot of influencers. Um, we get like, I get really, I mean, I had a, an influencer the other day who came to me. She's got like quarter of a million followers. I've got one in the U S who's got 800,000 followers. Um, and, but you see, interestingly enough, those, the, the one with the quarter of a million, million followers, I'm a bit mad about because she's just a celebrity and I'm not being funny, but although it sounds great that a celebrity uses your product, actually you're like they're like a one hit wonder and like they'll use it once you might get a bit of a flurry of traffic you might not um but um but the, the influencers that i like working with i like working with the smaller ones because they tend to be more passionate about the product so i obviously if i'm honest i tend to get people approaching me um mostly mm -hmm. um although we do approach some influencers as well but i do get i'm usually kind of batting people away rather than the other way around um, but I like working. You see, I, I actually, my team laugh at me sometimes because I'll say yes to someone and she's only got like a couple of thousand followers or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, but she really loves the product. And actually, if she really loves it, she's going to post about it. Now, the people with the 2000 followers are much more likely to have an engaged following themselves. So therefore, when they start like going, oh my God, I love this product. The other the other followers are like, well, what's that product? And they start asking questions. And I give them a discount code like on my website to promote their followers. So I can see like that they're out there selling my product for me, you know? And, and let's say that I'm a, a new product, okay? If I give you my, my example, I got uh, Pet Pillows product uh, selling on Amazon. I got about 50, uh, 50 reviews over there, a very good star rating. And I want to start working with an influencer. How should I start approaching influencers when I have a new product in Amazon? I, right. I, I, so for example, let's take the example of the bath pillows, right? <laughs> my so, beautiful uh, bath pillows. <laughs> what's that? My beautiful bath pillows. Yes, your beautiful bath pillows. Now, what I would do, for example, is I don't know if you've got them, but I'm a woman and I use a bath pillow and I actually have a bath pillow. And the reason I have a bath pillow is because it's really uncomfortable when you're sitting in the bath and your head's on the, the back of the bath. So, and I've had ones before. I had an inflatable one and then that kept deflating. And then I bought this one that was more padded, solid and cream because it just were well, white it just goes with the bath so it doesn't sort of stand out now what i would do if i was you i would have like different uh, bath shots you know like of like different setups of baths because for, for women right a bath pillow is not really going to get used by a child it's not really going to get used by a man maybe some men right maybe gay men if i'm honest <laughs> are more likely but they're because they're more in touch with that whole kind of like relaxation kind of enjoyment type thing so it's lighting candles it's like you know having nice music on or watching something on your ipad or you know um you know having like nice bath salts and all that sort of thing right because that's what that's what a bath is often about it's a kind of a relaxation thing right. so on your I, what i would what i would personally do is i'd make sure you've got some images that kind of reflect that right on your social media and get people to send you their photos of their baths, right? And in return, you give them a prize, seriously. And you, you say to them, like, this is, send me the, you know, post about like competition, um, send me your, um, your bath as it would be set up for an amazing night in your bath, chilling out, but without a pillow, because you need a pillow, right? And, the, and I'll cho we'll choose a winner, like, and then you'll win, a, win one or whatever, or give away five or something, right? And then, and then when they win, you say, oh, great. Would you mind doing a photo of it in situ or whatever it is? You know, obviously they're not necessarily going to take photos. Of Some of them probably will take photos of themselves in the bath. Yeah. So you just have to cut out the boobs. Um, <laughs> but like, but actually then take a photo like of your bath before and your bath after, you know, things like that. Um, and the thing with Instagram is Instagram has its own form of PPC and keywords. They're called hashtags, right? right? So you have to do the same sort of research on Instagram that you do for PPC or Amazon. So you have to look for the keywords that people, now I, I bet you like money that there will be things like bath time relaxation, bath time, you know, there'll be hashtags that reflect, you know, time in the bath, chilling out time, relaxation time, spa time, you know, all of those sorts of things, right? So 
with Instagram, uh, there are two different types of kind of keywords in terms of um, attracting attention. So you've got your grid, which is where you post your main picture. Now on those ones, you want to use more niche. Um, so again, your, your longer tail equivalent, uh, your lower ranking um, hashtags, and you can use up to 30, although I wouldn't necessarily go mental on the 30 all the time. They also don't like it if you use the same ones all the time, all the time. So it's a good idea. I personally usually have about 15 and I have about three or four variants where I mix them up. And then with each post, you put different ones, you know, out there. Then with stories, okay, stories, uh, you can actually go broader because there are less people using stories on Instagram. So you can actually use bigger hashtags. So for example, say like bath pillow would be a very low ranking uh, hashtag on gridline but there might be a few people following it you can find you do know you can find that you do know you can find how you find out about hashtags on instagram a bit. No? okay yeah. so what you do is you go to instagram on the desktop mm -hmm. and you type in some keywords right and then it'll start bringing them up and it'll bring up accounts that are relevant to it but also it'll tell you for example i use one baby safety right? And it'll tell you has been used 55,000 times, right? Oh, yeah. um, and so you can see then, and then there's other ones where it'll be, they've only been used 200 times or 1,000 times, 500, etc. So you can go big on the stories. So what you can do with the stories, all you do is you basically just use a picture. So say you take one of your nice pictures of different bars. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to find 10 of your friends who'll set up like bar time Set, sets for you like probably you want the lights low so it looks nice romantic and, and like chilling out time and then what you do is just go and take a photo of one of those and then use that as a story and then you just put in the hashtags the big hashtags um in there and you can hide them as well because what you can do is you can use a pick a color and so you can actually blend it into the background so they can't see that you've got 15 like and you can only use i think it's 11 in stories i think it's 11 uh, that's the max and then you just write something on it, which says something like, you know, um, do you dream of the best bath time experience or what's your, you know, and also you can do things like ask people questions. So you can do things like, uh, what's your can't do without product in the bath? You know, are you a bath person or a shower person? Are you, you know, because people will respond if you've got, you know, if you've got any kind yeah, of traction. It's creating interactions in Instagram and also in Facebook, right? I will do it in both places. Facebook's different again. Okay, because you don't have hashtags on Facebook. Um, and so actually, to, to be honest, we I get a lot of traffic through Facebook, but I think it's because a lot of people go to Facebook to check a company out more than they do Instagram. But I actually also think Instagram's a better place to sell. Because also, for example, Facebook and Instagram are now doing shops, like proper shops. Right. Um, so you'll be able to sell from your products directly. Like I'm on a Shopify website and I can hook them up to Instagram and Facebook currently, but they're about to streamline that process as well. And Pinterest is really good as well. Pinterest is another one, you know, <coughs> excuse me. The thing is that, and this is where, where there's a thing when you're only, when you're like a one person band, like there are so many things you could do. So the other thing is, I would say, is you don't have to do everything, right? Uh, oh, the other thing actually, sorry, as well, is on your packaging, include your social media, right? So I actually, hold on, I don't know if I've got one. Uh, oh yeah, look, here we are. Right, I'll show you. So on my packaging, the one that's come back, so it's it. Let me see, it says, get social with Snoo Shade. Wow, this is a great idea. Yeah. Yes, amazing. So if you, need, if you need us, get in touch, right? Because people don't want to do an email. It's too much hassle. And then if they can just search for you on, on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, I think I've got an email address. Yeah, I've got an email address on there as well, right? And that's big. If you need us, we're here, right? And, I, and, um, and, that, and that is not breaking any terms of service with Amazon. And neither should it fucking be either. Jesus Christ, you don't yeah. think Nike sits there and goes, oh, we can't put any contact information on our product because Amazon won't like it. I mean, what made you all tosh? So, um, <clears throat> you know, I think you've got to think like a real business, you know, and a real business wants its customers to interact with it. The other thing you can do is you could put a competition for your social media to win a, win a product or something if you post a picture of you in your bath with your bath pillow, right? Or your bath environment, right? Be creative. Because the thing is, like everyone thinks about, um, you know, you've got to work with what you've got. And if you're selling on Amazon, the way you can grow yourself outside of Amazon is to actually ask people to interact with you off Amazon. 
but the only way you're going to get them is by on your packaging so on your packaging do a competition do something where you know we do a once a month like prize for the person who sends us the best looking bath and it doesn't even have to be with them in it obviously you know um you know what's your bath setup i mean obviously i've given you give me a few tips yeah? you can draw a, a an amazon gift card for everyone that will send us pictures with uh Yes, Definitely. you can send it to everyone, but you can do it once a month. Like, just say, you know, and also, see, the thing is, what you also have to remember is people are vain, so they actually like to be kind of acknowledged by brands. So what's really funny is, like, you know, people send me pictures of them using my product, and I'm like, oh, that's a really lovely photo, that's fantastic, can I share it? Yes, boom, off I go. And then other people then see it, and they're like, oh, I'd like to do that too. So then they send me their pictures, and then I share that, because... You know like they like the fact that they are seen as important because a brand is sharing their picture you know because they've got like 2,000 followers I've got I mean I've only got 15 I, I'm not massive on Instagram uh, no sorry 12 I've got 12 on Instagram and I've got 15,000 on Facebook but you see the thing is also is that it's about quality not quantity so I would rather have 12,000 quality followers who are actually engaging with stuff that we're doing Versus having like 100,000 who are like, you know, 99% of them are in the Philippines or India and have been bought and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Because then you just get really crap, like people commenting on your posts all the time. I mean, I'd rather just get a few people commenting and actually asking decent questions or making like, I mean, we often get people recommending it. Like they'll tag their friend and say, oh, you should get one of these, you know? Hey, well, amazing, amazing tips. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think I'm, I'm going I to. Want to see, I want I'm to see your bathroom competition. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I think, I think we we had it all. Uh, we had how to build a business on Amazon, how to find a product in Amazon, how to scale so up. That's my product. My story is a bit different, I suppose. Really. <laughs> yeah. I think it's very unique, and I think again, I think really uh, out of the box thinker. So I really think that you know how to read the market before it's starting out yes i've actually weirdly i have actually always had that i know it sounds really strange but i once had my horoscope done years ago and they said i was very good at predicting things like trends and stuff like that so when i launched my product a lot of people hated it because my products are black right baby products are black like you know that's not like the done thing and now 10 years on it's so normal. Everyone like just walks around them on and they don't even think twice about it. And you know, exactly. so you can make your own, you can make your own business if you do it the right way. Okay. And if people would like to access you and, and ask for your help, how can they do it? Um, I'm on Facebook, funnily enough. Um, so I've got a page called make it, market it, sell it. Okay. I will put it on the comment on, on the, on the video oh, and actually I've, also got, um, I've got a free pdf as well at that um, i did about how to improve your listings as well i did like seven tips on um how to improve your amazon listings so i'll give you that and you can share that as well yeah it's really beautiful thank you very much on that okay kara it was very thank interesting you so it was lovely being on the beach with you uh, thank you very much and and keep keep the sun in the uk Oh, I'm, yeah, keep, I'm like, every, every day I'm checking the weather forecast and I'm like, no rain, no rain. <laughs> okay, Kira, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, thank you, lovely to talk to you.